director of photography, Alec Watson, and this is a two-part lesson on something that's gonna be controversial. Whoa, look out. I'm probably gonna even go as far as saying some people are going to get upset, and maybe in the comments, they're going to vehemently disagree with me. Here's the premise. I'm going to make the case that for a lot of people, it might be better to shoot in JPEGs than RAW. It's like, what? That goes against everything I've learned. Okay, let me make the case and let me, let me give you the why. As I said, this is gonna be a two part and I'm gonna show you the two parts of this. And my goal is to get you better results. This isn't gonna change the way you take pictures apart from in our cameras, we can take RAWs and we can take JPEGs and in most cameras, we have the choice of doing both. We can shoot simultaneously a RAW and a JPEG. This is actually what I'd recommend doing in a lot of cases. And believe it or not, this is something that I also do when I'm shooting like family vacation stuff. And there's a reason for it. So what I've done, I've gone ahead and I've picked two images that I shot when I was in Utah. I have the RAW here and I have the JPEG here. And as you can see, they look like the same image. Here's where it goes wrong for a lot of people. So if I take this JPEG and I pull it into the develop suite, we're gonna see the JPEG that came from my camera. And there we go, there's the JPEG, high resolution JPEG. We can see on the histogram that all the darks are in there, all the lights are in there. And that's because at one time, I'll try to do my best to explain this for you. At one time, the what we call the dynamic range of the camera, meaning the, the darkest dark that it can capture information on and the brightest bright that it can capture information on was a lot smaller than it is now. So one of the advantages, and still an advantage to shooting raw, is that you can use what we call a bigger dynamic range. Now that said, what happens in a lot of our modern cameras now is they have much bigger dynamic ranges than we can reproduce with even an expensive computer monitor. And the camera has its own processing computer in it. And that processing computer was optimized to pull information from the chip on your camera by the people who made, who made that chip and they know the limitations of that chip. They've put, they even go as far as putting in some AI stuff on our chips now to be able to optimize that and to be able to take a larger dynamic range to make it available to show up on a monitor. Now that was all a whole bunch of information. Let me just show you it as pictures and, and see if you can grasp this. So this dynamic range is actually huge. The, the sun is obviously really bright and I've got dark shadows and yet my histogram isn't burnt on either end in my JPEG. How can that be? Well, that's because the camera has compressed it really hard. The software designers and the hardware designers got together to be able to optimize photos and that clearly happened in this. Now, when I pull this raw in, this is gonna be something that I see a lot of comments on the, the internet and people question this all the time. And uh, watch closely. I'm gonna click on the raw file. It's going to appear and then it's gonna go bang and change. And it's just like, whoa, I like the image when it loads in to, to ACDC and then it changes and looks ugly. What's wrong with ACDC? Well, see, here's the thing. Nothing's wrong with ACDC. What you're actually seeing is a raw file, in actual fact, is just data. It's not a photo, it doesn't have color, it doesn't have a dynamic range, raw just means data. And so what happens is to be able to see a photo, even on your camera, and this, is, this sounds weird, <laughs> Stick with me for one second. To be able to see a, ca a photo on my camera that was shot in RAW, it actually has to have a JPEG. And so what happens is the camera encodes a low resolution JPEG into the RAW file just so we can see previews. And when we click on a RAW file, or when we're looking at a thumbnail of a raw uh, of a raw file, that thumbnail is that JPEG preview. And, and the guys at ACDC were kind enough to allow us, when we click on it, to pull up instantly that raw thumbnail while the data gets pulled in. And then 
whatever conversion they came up with at ACDC or, or any other company for that matter, it becomes the image that we see and it's optimized to give us the big, biggest dynamic range, which again, on these cameras is bigger than what we can show on a monitor. And so we often end up with this really flat, comparatively ugly picture to that thumbnail we saw for an instant of a second. Here is where I think that a lot of people would benefit from going with the JPEGs of their new cameras. I can take this image and I'm gonna look at it and I go, okay, well, it's gonna need some fill light. It's going to need some vibrance. Vibrance and saturation are very similar. Vibrance tends to, oops, not, uh, it tends to saturate things other than the skin tones. And of course, red rocks are similar to a skin tone. So I probably wanna get saturation added in this to get that red rock look of Bryce Canyon. There we go. Now I'm starting to get something that looks more pleasing. I'm getting a blue sky. I'm getting some red rocks and I have made this picture probably look a little bit better. I've done that quickly. And for most people, they'd, be go, they'd go, okay, I am done there. If I go back to manage mode, I'm gonna save this. And of course, being in the develop suite, when I save something, I'm, I'm not actually saving an image, I'm just saving uh, some slider controls. If I now take a look at this raw image versus our JPEG out of camera. And as usual, we're gonna use the image basket. We're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison of both of them. We'll notice that those two images are really similar, yet this one I had to go in and edit and make those changes to. And for a lot of people, although maybe those changes looked quick and easy, a lot of people don't get the, don't actually get those like optimized and right. And if you'd have just shot the JPEG, you'd already be as far as that. That that's my case for JPEGs. Now the other thing I'm going to show you, I said this is going to be a two-parter. Let's just go ahead and look at the JPEG a second. So I'm going to pull the JPEG only into the develop suite. Now when I look at this JPEG version. I notice that over here feels a little bit dark and through here feels a little bit dark. Just like masking, when we, were, when we were working with skies and backgrounds, one of the things that we can do is just use a, a brush. And I know I wanna open that section up a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some fill light and I can go in and I can brush some fill light into this section. We can toggle that on and off. There we go. There's me opening up a little bit of fill. What, what you'll find is when you add a little bit of fill, I'll, I'll toggle that again, because we, we see differences easier than we see real things, is that it becomes a little washy. So we're gonna add a little more contrast, which makes our darks darker and our brights brighter. There we go. And I'll add this a little bit through here into the top some back here and I'm going to add, I'm going to add some back here. We're going to go, we're going to talk about this section in our next video. When I add fill light to there, you'll notice that it's not doing much because in JPEGs, one of the weaknesses of JPEGs is there's just not a lot of data in the shadows. We're going to address that in our next video. And then through here, I'm going to add the same thing. I'm just opening up those shadows with that, that I can turn this mask on and you can, you can see it painted red. This is where I am adding fill light and a little bit of contrast. There we go. So I can do that, toggle that on and off and go, okay, you know what? The JPEG was good, but detail wise, I would say that's a little bit of an improvement. I go back to manage and I'll, I'll go ahead and click save on this. And I just want to do a comparison a second. And this is where I get the case for, I think a lot of people would improve an outcome if they shot in JPEG or at least shot in RAW and JPEG. I'm gonna take these two images and let's put them down in our image basket and do a comparison. So this is gonna be a side-by-side -side comparison. Here's our RAW image untouched. Here's our JPEG, like, I mean, obviously that's better. And, and could you make this raw better? Yes, of course, absolutely of course you could. But here's the thing, here's what I find when you're first working with image editing. We have a tendency 
to see change over understanding what an actual improvement is. And I come through the, I come to this idea through through music. I, I used to be a recording engineer. I've actually got a little, I got, I got a wall of gold and platinum records as a recording engineer. When I first started out, I would EQ things, change, change the, the audio frequencies or like the way things sound, but I didn't know what sounded great. I would make changes and it would be improved. And so yes, you can improve upon this, but can you improve upon it so much that you start in the manufacturer's optimized place where, for their chip? And the answer is maybe, maybe not. When you're starting out, absolutely not. And this is where I think JPEGs could be great as a tool to start out because that's one of the outcomes that you're looking for. Now, when you make a change to a JPEG, you're starting in a great place because this was optimized for this chip for dynamic range and saturation to give you a great outcome. And we can make improvements there. We get great results and it trains our eyes so that when we start to work on our raw files, we can take them to here and make improvements because like a raw file is superior in information but it's not, necessar not necessarily giving you a better outcome on your final image because you've got to do so much processing to it. This is instant. This takes me two minutes with a really experienced eyes to get to here. And you might just be able to just start there and improve on it. That's my argument for suggesting to you with kindness that shooting JPEGs and RAWs is not cut and clear. I, I think JPEGs are a great advantage for a lot of people. And in our next video, this is for like our novices and up, the, the people who say, oh man, I love shooting raw, but I wish my raw looked like my JPEG. I'm gonna show you how to do this. So you can start in that JPEG place and have the advantages of a raw file. Coming up next. Yeah.